Yes, indeed. Yesterday's game. Holy shit. That was a crazy fucking ending to a game. Let me walk you through it real quick in case you didn't uh, watch the game in its entirety like I did. Uh, early on, it appeared to be a pitching battle between John Lackey and Tom Kohler, of all people. Kohler was getting the best of it, uh, leading one to nothing. And then I think it was around fifth, sixth inning, the Cubs finally scratched a run across the board with an RBI hit from Wilson Contreras uh, to make it 1-1. One, one. Then uh, Lackey went out for the seventh inning, gave up a two-run shot to fucking Mathis, the Marlins' backup catcher. It was his second home run of the year. And that made it 3-1, and I was like, of course, here we go. In a close ball game, chance to sweep. You should sweep Lackey versus Kohler, but you're losing three to one off the heels of a two-run shot by Mathis, the Marlins' backup catcher. You got to be kidding me! The bullpen comes out. I think it was might have been Joe Smith. I actually turned away for a second, but I think he gave up the fourth run to the Marlins. And the going into the eighth, it's four-one now. Bottom of the eighth. And once, uh, no, not Montero, excuse me. I can't remember the eighth inning sequence, but the Cubs scratched together a run. They, probably, they really ought to got maybe two runs out of that inning. But it goes 4-2. Now we're going into the ninth. Uh, Montero, of all people who I've, you know, I've lamented about him. I wish he just really wouldn't play anymore. He's old. He, he really can't hit for shit anymore. He can't throw anyone out. Uh, I mean... He adds the pit framing, which is whoopee woo, pit framing, yeah. But uh, other than that, I wish he would have been, you know, thrown in some dumpster fire by now. But lo and behold, he's still around, and he leads off the bottom of the ninth with a double. Thinking, okay, well, this is going up against Ramos. I mean, Cubs need two runs. Uh, long way to go here, but all right, it's a start. Then uh, Javi Baez comes up. Smacks a uh, single through the infield. All right, two on. All right, feeling good here. Feeling good. Two on, no out. Get get a little better. And so far, a couple batters in. Um, Ramos is just showing like no signs of control. Just looking totally lost. He can't throw a slider over the plate, and uh, it's not looking grim. But hey, they're still up two runs. So, I'm, you know, it's still a long way to go. I mean, I, I was like, okay, maybe uh, – I was really actually hoping for a home run. You know, I just didn't see him stringing together enough things, enough hits, whatever, to actually tie the game or win it. So, I'm like, there's two on, so Tarling's at the plate. Uh, I mean, maybe a home run, you know, a miracle little, you know, dong right here. But anyways – so the next batter after Baez, I'm trying to recall who that was, actually. I want to say, I want to say it was Caesar. That's who I want to say it was, Matt Caesar. And he proceeded to walk, if memory serves. Yes, he did. I, I want to say he walked. Ramos is still just wildly out of control. And now it's bases loaded, no outs. I'm like... All right, that you know any any other team that I've watched that's not the Cubs, I'd probably be like, oh, this team's clear. But when you're watching your own team, you're like, oh, obviously they're you know they might not come through. And the Cubs have been in situations where they have bases loaded, no outs, and just totally failed completely. I like, couldn't even score a run. Um, but anyway, Fowler's at the plate now. He gets a sacrifice fly, so a run comes home, and both runners moved up, which was key, which is very key. Uh, now it's four to three. Okay, Ramos still, you know, not having a ton of control. I was just glad Fowler put a bat on the ball once he, uh, you know, got a pitch to hit. So it's four three now, and since both runners moved up, um, that would come into play. The next batter is Bryant, and whew, this at bat, man, like. Uh, he's, he, I think he swung and missed at the first pitch, which was like, how do you swing at the first pitch after this guy's 
basically look like Rick Vaughn, you know, ball four, ball eight, ball 12. Um, but anyway, he, he battles through and at bat. I think it's three, two Ramos throws a, a slider, which is clearly off the plate by a good three, four inches. You know, it's not like, Ooh, that could go either way. No, that was clearly a ball. Brian checks his swing, but the fucking ump rings him up as a called strike. Uh, so now it is uh, two outs now. Two outs to go. Still runners on second and third. Score still four to three, of course. And <clears throat> Rizzo's coming to the plate. Now this is where the runners moving up on that Dexter Fowler uh, sack fly come into play. Because now first base is open and they're facing Rizzo. Okay? Excuse me. They walk him, and rightfully so, because that base is empty. Had that base not been empty, maybe it was, let's say, first and third. Let's say, uh, I guess Caesar would be. Let's say Caesar didn't advance. Then they might pitch to Rizzo. Maybe he comes through and ties it or more, or maybe he does nothing. We'll never know. But since the base is empty, they walk him, which brings us Zo up Zobrist. Two outs still. Base is loaded now, as I said. Zobrist works a hell of an at bat. And now, since there's obviously runners at every base, anything scores. Zobrist gets hit. Um, a walk. I mean, now you don't have to get a hit to score the man from third with the bases being loaded. Well, I think it was 3-2 again to yet another batter. At this point, Ramos is probably have, has thrown nearly 30 pitches at this point, if not more. He throws a, a slider low and away, which is actually, it wasn't in the strike zone, but it was, a, it was a tempting pitch to swing at. Like, kudos to Zobris. Lays off of it. Ball four. Take your base. Runner comes home from third, which I think was Baez. So now it's 4-4. Four, four, tied. Holy shit. At this point, I'm like, anything's gravy at this point. If they go into extras and, and happen to lose, that's fine. Because I didn't expect them to come back against Ramos down two runs. you know. And they already had the series wrapped up because they won the first two games. So at this point, I'm like, okay, this is pretty fucking cool. So now we're, we're, we're at, uh, who are we at now? Zobris walked, forced, forced by us home uh, to score the tying run. And now we're at, hmm... I'm trying to recall who is a bat here. God, oh, Wilson Contreras. I'm sorry for the delay there. A little brain fart. Wilson is a bat. And I can't remember the count, what pitch to Wilson it was. I, I don't think it was that deep of a count, honestly. I don't think it like the it seemed like every batter before him was three two at some point. But I I this was not a deep count. Anyways. Wilson's up there. All you could again, uh, a base hit wins the game. A walk wins the game. A hit by pitch wins the game. Or, and I called this to my friend who's a Marlins fan. We were chatting at the end of the game, like, uh, you know, just catching up. I'm like, oh, well, I guess the Marlins are gonna, you know, win the win the last one, not get swept or whatever. And and he's uh, pretty much texting me about how he hates Mattingly at that point in the game because. He felt that Ramos shouldn't have stayed in there, and he shouldn't have. I mean, these managers with their old school mentality of a closer's got to close, 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 close the game. Can't take him out. Like any other relief pitcher would have been yanked like a long time ago. That's how bad Ramos was looking. <laughs> Mattingly kept him out there, and I was like, all right. Oh, this is fine by me. So we were going back and forth about that, and he was – Really irritated that Ramos was even in the damn game. And so I text him. I go, wild pitch. I'm calling it now. And sure enough, the next pitch, Ramos throws a, I'm presuming it was a slider that got away. But it wasn't even close. It was in the other batter's box, for Christ's sake. And uh, the winning run comes home to score, that being Matt Caesar. Game over. Cubs win 5-4 to four and sweep the Marlins on a, just a fucking literal, literally a wild pitch ending. Crazy. Uh, it was fucking awesome. I mean, 
through much of the year, the some com- flaws or some complaints about the Cubs from fans have been uh, they haven't been able to win close games or they haven't had many walk-offs because last year they had a number of walk-offs. I mean, if it was a close game, they were winning. Um, but this year, especially like if they're if they're down late in the game, they they haven't really come back a ton. Like honestly, usually they're either closing out a game or they've won by you know four runs, five runs, you know something ridiculous. But uh, they came back again, and this was on the heels of that ridiculous Seattle game in which John Lester laid down the suicide squeeze and Hayward came sprinting down third and slid into home for the winning run. So this is a couple of really wild, just insane endings uh, at Wrigley. Which is great, obviously. I mean, it's nice to see them win in a different fashion, in a close fashion, because in the playoffs... They're going to have to win close ball games, tight ball games. They're going to have to find ways to do it, whether it's taking your walks to get men on, whether it's being patient in a count um, to where you can, you know, have the possibility of, you know, something like a one pitch happening or even the suicide squeeze, which, you know, I don't imagine John Lester doing that in the playoffs. But, you know, you get my point that these type of wins are, you know, they could be useful later on. They can, like, go back in the catalog in their head and be like, give themselves confidence to where like, all right, we did this before. We won when we were down. We won in a, just an oddball fucking fashion. And I also think these victories help galvanize the team as if they aren't already a close-knit group. Wins like this just, I think, bring clubs together. And that's not my opinion. That's actually the words and uh, sentiment being expressed by Madden and players alike. So, wild finish. Wild finished. Uh, today's an off day. Uh, which, you know, I hate off days. It's just boring. You just come on. You want to see them get back on the field, especially when they're playing so well lately. And kudos to them as well. They have the second best record in the majors after the All-Star break. And if you listen to any of my podcasts before, and I'm talking to just a few of you, then you know the Cubs were just absolutely dreadful heading into the All-Star break. But hey, hey things turn around quickly. I think they were 5-16 and 16 or 5-15 and 15 going into the break. Something just not good. I think 6-15. and 15. Maybe that's what it was. And coming out of the break, I think they're now 14-6 or something like that. Or maybe it's something like that. Something really good. Let's put it that way. They haven't lost a series since the All-Star break. And they got things rolling. They're now 20, I think, four games over 500. Their water, their, their season high, their watermark was uh, 27 early in the year. They're now 24 games over. I think the Cardinals hung on to win yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. So the Cubs stay at nine games over, which, I, yep, yeah, that's the biggest lead in any division, nine games. I mean, nine games isn't, you know, nothing to sneeze at. That's a pretty big cushion. Now you, there's only about 50-some-odd games remaining. I mean, the chances they blow a nine-game lead in the division at this point is fucking slim and none. So there's a certain Cardinals fan I know that might want to head to his local market or grocery store and start perusing the, uh, you know, the bakery section, see if they can find him some kind of nice pie or pies, you know, you know, if he wants to do a dull or nothing, uh, who knows? Anyways, Go ahead and wrap this up. That was a crazy wild victory. Um, It's been a little bit since I've been on here. I think I'm kind of just playing it by ear with these things. If something inspires me to get on here and babble, then I will. Uh, But anyway, until next time, this has been another Riz on my podcast.